Yes! At the point in time that you're watching this video, we're going on five months that Trials of the Nine has been absent from Destiny 2. See, we didn't have Trials throughout Season 4, which marked the beginning of Year 2, and the return of Trials isn't anywhere to be seen on the roadmap for the entirety of Year 2. That has a lot of people upset, and it's almost solely due to the fact that Destiny 2 has had to fight to maintain relevancy due to Bungie's ongoing battle with the player base and their insatiable appetite for content. Now, Trials was special in the sense that even if you had nothing to do in the game, you could always look forward to the weekend and the show yourself that you'll have something to do. Trials was in-game PvP, but it was cut from a completely different cloth than the rest of the game. For those of you that never played Destiny 1 as well as anybody who didn't play Destiny 2 until year 2, Trials of the Nine was a highly competitive live event stylized PvP game mode that came around every Friday and entered on reset day. Teams of four would fight as hard as they could in order to win seven games without losing a single game, which is referred to as going flawless. After going flawless, you and your fire team were granted access to a social space known as Aspire, where you collect Trials of the Nine specific gear consisted of weapons, armor, and armor ornament. From what I remember, Trials of the Nine was available after the second week of Destiny 2's release, and the player base noticed multiple glaring issues with this game mode almost instantly. For one, there was no light slash power level advantage enabled, which is odd because Destiny 1's version of Trials, known as Trials of Osiris did have light level advantage enabled. And this was no big surprise that Bungie decided to do this because Destiny 2's Iron Banner also ditched light level advantage, which once again was not how things were done in D1. The irrelevancy of light levels in Trials of the Nine, as well as no inclusion of skill based matchmaking, removed most, if not all, of the fun factor and exhilaration of playing Trials of the Nine as a whole. It was 100% random who you go against. One game you might go against teams like Grenader, Jake, and Hush. The next game you could go against a team playing Trials for the first time in their lives. There was no predictability and this lack of arithmetic made Trials of the Nine the polar contrast of a challenging and rewarding experience. Now, if you played Trials of the Nine, you could tell that Bungie really didn't know what to do with the game type or how to approach it. Because this game type was around when Destiny 2 was at its lowest point. Year 1 was when the time to kill and ability cooldowns were incredibly slow. Everybody was forced to use two primary weapons, stick together, and team shoot everything that moved. It just was not very entertaining. It didn't help that going flawless may have still been perceived as an accomplishment, but there was no exclusive flawless gear for the exception of the armor ornaments, which didn't come out into Curse of Osiris, so you really didn't have much to show for. It isn't currently known when Trials of the Nine will return, or if it ever will, but it's more than safe to say that a a lot of changes will have to be made in PvP before it does, and I honestly feel like that's what Bungie's really trying to do. Trust and believe that I hate that Trials is no longer here because no matter how bored I am of Destiny, Trials has always been something to do. But I would rather Trials be on hiatus and return with a bang instead of returning with all these problems happening in the Crucible right now. I personally believe that one of the biggest concerns is the Luna's How and Not Forgotten and how well these weapons will get along with Trials. Okay, so the way things work in regards to obtaining the Luna's How and Not Forgotten, you have to be A, skilled at PvP, even more so to obtain Not Forgotten, B, be a part of a really good fire team, or both. If you're not particularly skilled at PvP or if you don't play PvP at all, you'll never get either one of these weapons. Cut and dry. You have to make some sort of adjustments if either of these factors apply to you. And the brutal honesty of things is that only the quote unquote best and or skilled players will have a chance to get these weapons. So what exactly does that have to do with Trials? Simple. Imagine going against a full team of not forgotten users. These four players are most likely going to be using Dust Rot Blues, and if you don't have any viable counters, there's almost no way of doing anything about it. I understand that Trials is meant for the most skilled players to strut their stuff or whatever, but the most elite PvP players will always have a distinct advantage solely due to what the Lunas How and Not Forgotten are capable of. Honestly, it would be more so than Not Forgotten since it takes about 5,500 glory points to obtain it and almost any and everybody who did this is probably rocking a 2.0 KD or close to it. I would assume that Shards of Galanor will also be somewhat of an issue as well. I personally don't have a problem with Shards of Galanor, but the thought of somebody getting a team wipe or just killing two opponents with their super and getting most if not all of it back is literal nightmare fuel. It would be even worse going against a full team using Shards of Galanor. Now I would go on a tirade about Nova War, One-Eyed Mass, and Telesto as well, but it's been pretty much confirmed by Bungie that these are getting toned down in some way sometime during this month of January so we'll have to see how that goes. Now Trials has always been like show and tell. Players will bring their best absolute gear in order to get as much viability out of their loadouts as they possibly can because in such a high skill oriented game mode every bit of viability makes a difference. But one thing that's always been a thing is how much of a precedent Trials sets for the PvP meta. Basically whatever is the most popular in Trials it would transfer almost seamlessly into regular PvP. 
the meta has always been a lot more annoying to deal with due to the monotony of everybody using the same exact loadout. It just got tiresome and overly predictable seeing everybody using the same exact weapons. This is more of a personal gripe and less of an actual problem though, so yeah. But to conclude everything, Bungie will probably have their work cut out for them when it comes to Trials, and the only way it will work flawlessly, pun intended, is if Trials has its own separate sandbox. Realistically, I can't see this happening, but it would definitely make it a lot easier when it comes to balance. I heard people propose that Bungie should create a ban list or something like that for Trials, and the only way that would work is if a weapon or armor piece is too powerful, you would be prohibited from searching for a game of Trials until you unequip that particular gear. And since Trials are denying locked loadouts after the match starts, this could see some practicality provided that Bungie implements it fairly and correctly. I just hope that if they did, they would be able to distinguish the complainers who cry about things being overpowered and asking for nurse all the time from those who actually want a fully fledged entertaining gaming experience. Because it would be the former that would be the same exact group of people that would ruin trials for everybody. We want balance. Not everything nerfed into the ground and or too many things prohibited from being used. My biggest concern is that Bungie would make the mistake and listen to the wrong side of the community. But anyways, that does it for this one everybody if you enjoyed this video drop me a like if you're new to my neck of the woods subscribe to the channel for more elite gaming content but with that being stated one lhd is over and out y'all take it easy yes, yes.